generation, someone has said, stands on the shoulders of those who led the generation before. This generation of high school students stands even taller today. In science particularly, the high school students of today tower over those who began their studies in science 25 or 30 years ago. 35 years ago, when I was a student in high school, things were much different than they are today. My high school science laboratory, although it contained many of the basic items of equipment still in use today, was different in that the amount of information available to us was much less than that available to students today. Also, the avenues for the application of newly acquired knowledge were not so obvious. Today, the fundamentals of science are being applied in more and more diversified fields. America's space program, and Skylab in particular, have helped to broaden the vistas of today's science student. The doors of the high school science lab now open into a new and exciting world, even into the new frontier of space. Skylab's three missions opened the walls of man's earthbound laboratories as never before. Skylab not only extended man's vision and his goals into the expanse of space, the Skylab program extended man's ability to work in space for long periods of time and to conduct in space a series of scientific experiments ranging from the nature of the universe to studies of Earth and even down to studies of the structure of a single human cell. Skylab made a unique contribution to science, to man's understanding of himself, his planet Earth, the sun from which the earth receives its energy, the solar system, and space phenomena. Thirty years ago, the results of a major scientific investigation of this kind might have taken decades to filter down into the science curricula of high schools. Today, this happens in a matter of months. For within months of the end of the Skylab program, High school science students throughout America were observing science demonstrations televised from Skylab and designed especially for classroom use. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bounce it with these two long pieces of wire that I have. Okay, let's give it a wrap on both sides. From a demonstration of a Skylab experiment in fluid mechanics, to another Skylab demonstration of an experiment with a gypsy moth in space. Science students in high schools today can watch actual experiments performed in space, presented on their level of understanding in science demonstrations prepared by NASA and circulated to schools. These brief demonstration films cover a variety of subjects in various scientific disciplines. There is an experiment with magnets in zero gravity. They end up producing a flat spin. And the explanation for that is something that I'm not uh, aware of. And uh, it was a puzzle to me when I first saw it here uh, the other day. And uh, perhaps you can talk that over in your science classes and uh, figure out a good explanation. Another experiment deals with the behavior of liquid films in space. Astronaut Owen Garriott investigates the behavior of minnows born in the zero gravity of space compared with those born on Earth. Astronaut Alan Bean demonstrates the behavior of darts in a weightless environment. Astronaut Edward Gibson on liquid floating zones. Skylab science demonstrations on other subjects included fluid mechanics human body momentum, Rochelle salt growth, and the gyroscope operating in zero gravity. In the spacecraft systems, the Apollo system uses a little journal like this, a set of them, and it uses these journals to remember its orientation. What we do is we, before we spin up the journal, we... Skylab, man in space exploring for high school students today phenomena that cannot be observed on Earth. 
Skylab is also sure to be noted as the first major scientific undertaking in which experiments designed and supervised by high school student investigators were carried out. For these young scientists, Skylab opened onto space, their classroom walls, erasing the limits with which students so young have always studied until now, accelerating the process of learning at this age. Hello, I'm Kirk Sherhart from Berkeley, Michigan. My experiment, Powder Flow in Zero Gravity, ED73, is part of the Student Skylab project. I'm Ken Brandt from Grand Blank, Michigan, student investigator for this project. Hello, I'm Allison Hopfield. I'm from Princeton, New Jersey, where I'm a junior at Princeton Day School. I'm a student experimenter on ED21, Photography of Libration Clouds. I'm Vince Converse from Harlem High School in Rockford, Illinois. My Skylab student experiment is zero gravity mass measurement. I'm Robert Staley of the Harley School in Rochester, New York. Hi, I'm Joel Wordy Camper from West Point, Nebraska, the student investigator for this experiment. On Earth, roots grow towards gravity or exhibit geotropism, while the stems grow towards light or exhibit phototropism. I'm Donald Slack, and I'm from Downey High School in Downey, California. I'm one of the Skylab student experimenters. Hi. I'm Cheryl Peltz, and I'm the student investigator for the Skylab student experiment, ED63. It's entitled Cytoplasmic Streaming in Zero Gravity. I'm Judy Miles. I'm from Lexington, Massachusetts, and I'm the student investigator for ED52, Web Formation in Zero Gravity. Over 3,400 students from high schools throughout the country submitted experiments for review by the National Science Teachers Association. The experiments of 25 students were selected for inclusion on Skylab. Hi, I'm Todd Meister, the student investigator for Skylab experiment ED32 in vitro immunology. All 25 students either had their experiments flown on board or were associated with NASA scientists on other Skylab projects. All these students thus remained involved in the Skylab program, a learning experience all of them enjoyed. Wouldn't you? Hi, I'm Kathy Jackson. I'm from Clear Creek High School in Lake City, Texas, which is near Houston, Texas. This is my experiment, ED41, and it's called a quantitative measure of motor sensory performance during prolonged in-flight zero-g. Kathy learned something. So did her fellow student investigators as they followed up their experiments after Skylab returned its experimental data to Earth. And so a new experience in secondary education began. An experience spreading throughout America's schools today where students not only benefit from the impact of Skylab research in a wide variety of scientific disciplines, they also benefit from the fact that for these students, Skylab opened the doors, opened the walls of their schools to a limitless expanse, and opened their minds to unlimited speculation and to unlimited dreams. The teachers were limited to a textbook, and what was printed in that textbook, where now they, they can expand to, to live television programs and visual Check aids. I mean, it stands to reason that somewhere out there floating in space, there has to be something just other than space. And we thought, well, you know, maybe in the future, we say that some of us want to be doctors or something. You know, we say, well, we're going to be like our parents. We got uh, much more of a response to the entire program itself, you know, which I don't think we would have. The experiment that I would do, probably, I think would uh, turn my attention toward the sun. Skylab was only the beginning. We are on the verge of an era when man will launch a whole new generation of manned space laboratories regularly served by shuttles to carry scientists, technicians, experiments and supplies between Earth and space. As this new era of space exploration begins, 
Along with it will grow a new and continuously enriched educational experience for students in America's schools. An experience that will have an immeasurable impact on science and on man in the years that lie beyond tomorrow.